everybody welcome to my channel today's activity is about redox titration and redox titration involves two reacting species one is oxidizing agent and the other is reducing agent and today's practical our oxidizing agent is potassium permanganate and that of the reducing agent is oxalic acid so the objective of today's activity is that we are going to prepare a standard solution of oxalic acid and we use this standard solutions to standardize potassium permanganate solution so our potassium permanganate solution is here i don't know its concentration so i'm going to prepare the oxalic acid and it will help me to determine the concentration of this potassium permanganate solution so we will go straight to the procedure now when i read the procedure my colleague isaac will carry out the practical so procedure one put the potassium permanganate solution in the bread isaac has already done that the next step is that pipette 25 ml of the oxalic acid solution into the flask now i'm going to demonstrate how to prepare the oxalic acid solution so when i prepare it then isaac will pipette it so I have here with me my oxalic acid and I have here my decaf. So I'm going to do the way. The mass of oxalic acid I'm weighing is on the board. It's 0 0.315. 0 0.315. The calculation is there. So that's what I'll be weighing. I need distilled water to dissolve the acid. So I will use the stirring rod to stir so that it will dissolve very fast. Oxalic acid is a weak acid and it is found in plants as oxalates. Yes. And when you combine two carboxylic acids, you get oxalic acid. It has dissolved, so I will quickly transfer it into my 100 ml volumetric flask. Please hold this for me. Thank you. To rinse the beaker and pour it back into the volumetric flask. Okay. I'll take the funnel off and top up with distilled water. As I'm pouring, my colleague will be checking so that I don't exceed the meniscus. the meniscus so I will shake for everything to mix okay so my colleague will pipette 25 ml of that of what I just prepared now I 
Now, some of the uses of oxalic acid, uh, it is used to remove rust, or it is a ra rust remover. Yes, and it is also used to um, bleach woods. Yes, it is also used to bleach woods. So that is what Isaac is doing. He's pipetting the oxalic acid. So the next step is add 5 ml of the dilute sulfuric acid to the solution in the conical flask. So after this, Isaac will add 5 ml of dilute sulfuric acid. It is here. And its concentration is 0 0.5 molar. 0 0.5 molar. We are adding sulfuric acid because Sulfuric acid is stable towards oxidation. It is going to prevent hydrolysis and it is going to provide more H plus ions to keep the reaction going. You know, oxalic acid is a weak acid, so it is not able to provide a strong acidic medium for the redox reaction to occur. So we need to add an extra acid which is stronger than oxalic acid. And the best acid, acid to use is the sulfuric acid. So he has added and we have to move to the next step. The next step says that warm the solution up to about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius and titrate the core solution with potassium permanganate until the first permanent pink color is obtained. So we are going to heat this acid mixture to about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. Then we'll come back and perform the titration. What I'm saying. So we are doing the heating. We are to heat it between 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. We have to uh, perform the titration while the solution is hot. Because the reaction between potassium permanganate and oxalic acid is very slow at room temperature. So we need to heat it to increase the rate of reaction. Now when we overheat it, um, the heat will decompose the oxalic acid to produce carbon dioxide. We don't want that. Yes, we don't want that at all. So my colleague is checking the temperature of the acid with a mercury thermometer. Okay, now the temperature of our mixture is exactly 60 degrees Celsius. So we are expecting a permanent pink color at the end point. That is what we are expecting. That's what my colleague is doing drop by drop because this is our first titration. We don't know what we, what to expect. We don't know. Now, we didn't use indicator in this practical. If you observe, we didn't use it because redox titration that involves potassium permanganate do not require any indicator because permanganate is self-indicating. It is self-indicating. It is a colored solution, as you can see. It is violet. In some books, you see it as purple. Because it is a colored solution, when you use it in titration and the color of the of the, the purple color of the potassium permanganate changes to a different color. We use we use that change in color as our end point. So we don't need any indicator. Okay. 
drop by drop. That's what Isaac is doing. So redox reaction is taking place. So potassium permanganate is oxidizing the oxalic acid. That is what it is doing. to be really really patient yes now some redox titrations also involves indicators yes redox titration that involves iodine we need indicators such as starch from our knowledge from photosynthesis if you want to determine the presence of starch we add iodine so for that redox, you need an indicator, but for potassium permanganate, redox titration that involves potassium permanganate, you don't need any indicator because permanganate is self-indicating or self-indicator as some books will put it. Now my colleague is being extra careful, yes. Because we want to see the permanent pink color. So he's very, very careful. So this is our pink color. Yes, this is our pink color, permanent pink color. This is our color, yeah. So this is the end point. So I, I said earlier that potassium permanganate is self-indicating. The actual color is purple or violet. But after the end point, it has changed to permanent pink color. Yes, so we don't need any indicator. It is self-indicating or self-indicator. So this is our permanent pink color. It's very beautiful. Yes, my colleague has really done well. He's very expert in titration. Yes, I'm very happy. I'm very, very happy. Okay, so viewers, this is our end point for our redox titration. The permanent pink color color we were talking about this is it very beautiful yes and unfortunately we are done with today's activity very very unfortunate very 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 unfortunate so the rest is theory now we have to write a balanced equation between potassium permanganate and oxalic acid showing the oxidation half and the uh, reduction half the then you take the calculation from there. We are not going to do that. We just wanted to demonstrate to you the practical aspect of the theory. And that is what my colleague did. 
so i want to thank everybody for your support for the comments and for subscribing to my channel i'm very very grateful and i want to thank my colleague here isaac for demonstrating it for us i'm very very happy for the for the results yes i'm very happy i will see you again in my next video please take care of yourself and it's been a long time i spoke spanish so i will say adios Bye. Bye.